Welcome to our second lecture where we will be talking about the surgery on the eye. The eye is such a small organ, but takes on a very big responsibility for the animal's vision. We will discuss the preoperative considerations in performing eye surgeries, the different medications and drugs specifically acting on the eye, and different conditions or pathologies which require surgical correction. Note, cataracts are not included in this lecture. Let's start. There is simply no way to start a discussion on eye surgeries without a review on your anatomy. Can you name these structures? I will give you a full minute to write down your answers. see if your answers are correct. Number one, this structure right here would be the pupil. Yes, this structure dilates or constricts depending on the amount of light the eye is exposed to. Number two is the cornea. This is the most anterior layer of the eyeball. How about number three, this membrane within the lower eyelid? That is the third eyelid. Number four would be the structure that controls how much the pupil dilates or constrict. That would be the iris. Number five is the easy one. This structure right here, which divides the eye into two chambers. What is number five? Yep. That's the lens. Number six is the gland which secretes our tears. That is the lacrimal gland. The outermost layer of the globe within the orbit is what we call the sclera. This is the white portion of our eye. Deep within it is number eight, the retina. The eyeball has two chambers. The anterior chamber which is bounded by the lens and the cornea. But what is the number, rather other chamber, marked as number nine in here? This is the posterior chamber or the vitreous chamber, which contains the vitreous humor. In some literature, it is labeled as the vitreous chamber. Lastly, number 10 is the, this structure right here, Yep, that is the optic nerve, which is cranial number. What is that? Cranial number two. Correct. In conducting clinical workup for patients, there are multiple preoperative factors that need to be considered. Most periocular and ocular surgical procedures are performed by general practitioners while the complicated and or severe ones are referred to the veterinary specialists. The most common conditions involving the eye are eyeball prolapse, eyelid lacerations, and corneal alterations. The evaluation of every patient with an eye condition must be done through a rig rigorous process that includes routine blood tests, and physical exam. You must also be able to identify any concurrent abnormalities that are pre-existing in the patient's body. 
you have to ask questions like, is the eye problem that I see in this patient only localized in the eye? Or can it be a clinical manifestation of a more complex pathology? Of course, the actual examination of the eye itself, the assessment of its intact reflexes, and the evaluation of the patient's vision are necessary processes in an ophthalmic clinical workup. Surgical considerations such as appropriate choice of technique, availability and knowledge of the supplies and equipment to be used, and the intricate attention to detail are just a few of the factors why eye specialists take over for more complicated conditions which require more technical knowledge and experience to effectively address and treat. Perioperative antibiotics may be given. Hold up. Wait. What do we mean by perioperative? Do you still remember? Perioperative is an umbrella term for any period surrounding the surgery. It means all the time before, during, and after a surgery. So if you want to be as specific, for example, you, you just want to give antibiotics before a surgery. That would be pre-operative. If you just want to give a drug after a surgery, that needs to be labeled post-operative. If it's only given during a surgery is done, that is simply called operative. So perioperative is an umbrella term for this time period. Going back, perioperative antibiotics may be given since various parts of the eye have a normal bacterial flora, which can act as pathogens if their environment becomes conducive for microbial growth. Examples of these are the conjunctival sac, the cornea, the eyelids, both upper and lower, the lacrimal ducts, and the tarsal glands. Whoa! Tarsal glands. What is the other term for this? And where can you see it? Where are those tarsal glands located? Write your answer in the comment section of this video. Tissues surrounding the eye get easily inflamed and swollen with minimal manipulation. You may notice this yourself when something accidentally gets into your eye and you feel irritated, you feel pain, and your eye would instantly get red and inflamed and tears would instantly be secreted. These processes are meant to protect this very sensitive ocular tissue from further damage. For analgesia, NSAIDs may be administered before the surgery to manage any existing inflammation and to anticipate intraoperative inflammation.